Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. Welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, happy spring. It's finally April. Yay. And happy Easter. Yes. Um, yeah, that's coming happy up. Happy Easter. And I, you know, Easter's whatever, but I'm so excited to like, celebrate Easter with my niece and like, <gasps> Easter egg yes. hunt and dye mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah, that'll be really cute. Is she was she at the age last year where where she got to enjoy it a little bit? Um, she was, but I wasn't able to go. Oh, okay. So yeah, she, yeah. but even better this year because now she's like really into it. You know. Yeah, so it's sort of the opposite at my house where like everybody's <laughs> sort of older now, so mm-hmm. nobody really cares much about. Yeah, well, Easter. that's how it's been like the past many years, but now it's fun again. Yeah, yeah. So yay. Yeah, that'll be cool. I'll probably, um, I still don't know what I'm doing for Easter, but probably do the same thing I do every year. Um, and my mom will make Easter dinner and I might get an Easter basket. I don't know. Oh, cute. I want to throw an egg at you for it, Easter. It, no, what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. Um, I don't know about that. I, <laughs> I actually, um, I... I'm a fan of, like, hard-boiled eggs. Me too. So I'm kind of excited about dying eggs. I don't know if that's on the table this year, though. Uh, I don't know. My mom why not? hasn't mentioned it. But also, I think but she plans stuff last minute a lot of the time. True. Also, you can just get something for yourself. We could die eggs. I mean, that's true. That's true. We could. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see. Ideas. She usually does get a lot of them, though, and then, like, we, we all die them. So maybe she will. Mm-hmm. hmm Me and my mom... Um, have dyed eggs like every single year since I was little and our tradition is that we just like okay didn't you say last year that you eat the dyed eggs yes okay so I that's what I just said I just said I'm a fan of I just I just now realized that that's why (laughs) and then I said I'm a fan of um hard-boiled eggs and you said you are too me too but not are you dyed ones why because I don't know I think the food color like makes it taste bad okay Literally, like, it doesn't even get into the egg unless it's cracked. Well, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> like, sometimes there will be, like, a little crack in the shell. No, And sure. then you'll open it up and it's blue. But most of the time, it's not. And they're perfectly normal. So also, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. You know what? We had. I know for a fact that we had this debate on... We like probably a did. year ago because I was about to tell you guys that me and my mom's tradition was that we like to like keep the eggs out to look at them for like however long until they go bad. And then once they go bad, throw them at trees in my woods, like behind my house. Yeah. See, <laughs> I just I remember you telling me this and me just going like, what are you talking about? Why don't you eat them? <laughs> OK. Also, another reason I don't like to eat them is because we dissolve the little tablets of color in vinegar. And I think it makes the eggs taste like vinegary. Well, see, that's the thing, too. Like, I'm pretty sure we use vinegar, too. Okay, but I don't like that it tastes like an egg and vinegar. You know what I'm saying? But it does. Taylor, I'm telling you, it does not (laughs) taste. It doesn't. Okay, we we can't just, like, have this debate this whole podcast. But I'm telling you, it does not. (laughs) Okay, guys, just so you know, just for all of your sake, I'm going to try. I'm going to try egg with Savannah. You have um, to. For yeah, an Easter egg. Yeah. So, update next week on that. Jeez. There's people out there on both sides of this, I bet. I think that they definitely are. So, let us know which <laughs> Easter egg side you're on. I'd love to know. Mm-hmm. And we'll come, We'll come. I'll come with a full circle conclusion next week. So, yeah. make sure you come back for that. Well, <laughs> since we record ahead of time, you might not be able to. Oh, okay. Well, in some future date, you will yeah. know yeah. <laughs> the answer. Yeah, it might have to take two weeks, but yeah. we'll we'll let you know. <laughs> yep, you're just gonna have to keep coming back and listening so you can hear the answer. Uh huh. Okay. Um. <laughs> do you have anything else to, to talk about? No, no, I don't. Okay. Oh my god, I didn't. I forgot we had this debate last year too. Me I'm too. Like I, I'm still like appalled at you. Too. I'm appalled <laughs> at you, Savannah, for eating them. That is just so. I'm so sorry. Okay, wait. I do have one more question. Do you okay. keep them in the refrigerator? Yes. But you don't get to look at them. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> what do you have for us this week, Savannah? Okay, okay. <laughs> um, well, I have a story 
um, that takes place in New Jersey. Joyzy. Um, I'm going to be talking about two haunted roads. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so, um, actually, shout out to my mom for, she, um, she sent me a video on one of these roads and, like, she was just like oh this is a good podcast idea so it's like okay shout out and to her because she loves to give the podcast ideas she does i know <laughs> she like she gives them to me like all the time um but this this is a good one um it's whippoorwill road Ooh. actually it's the full name is whippoorwill valley road that's a tongue twister yeah whippoorwill valley road and the second one is cooper road so the main one I'm going to be talking about is Whippoorwill, but then Cooper is, like, also kind of spooky, and it's, like, um, adjacent to it, so oh. like, they're both in the same area, so it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of spooky. So, they are both in Middletown, New Jersey, which is in Monmouth County, and this area is, like, by the shore, um... But it's, like, near, it's, like, sort of in the middle section of New Jersey uh, and, like, close to New York a little bit. I don't know, but it's, like, it, it's by the shore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of hard if you're not looking at a map, but, um, yeah, so that's where it is. Um, <clears throat> so both of these streets I'm going to talk about, like I said, they run sort of adjacent to each other. And they are both, like, unlit streets, and they're, they're like, unpaved. Mm-hmm. Mm. So. <laughs> it makes it very creepy. Also, just a horrible road to drive down. It, yeah, it does. Um, and there are also, like, nowadays, there's, like, multi-million dollar mansions on these roads. But, like, there used to not be anything, really. So, you're telling me there's multi-million dollar mansions and they can't pave the road? <laughs> well, I think they want to be, like, sort of out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know, okay. th- they want that vibe. I get that. You know? Um, like, they probably could, but they, they're they just not wanting to. Yeah, or they spent um, all the money on the house. Yeah, and there are sections of the... I, I believe there are sections of the roads that are paved, but just, like, not the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, that sort of vibe. So, the first one I'll talk about is Cooper Road. So, um, for this road, legend says that there was a farmer that lived on this road with his wife. Um, doesn't really specify a year or anything, but, you know, just a a while back, um, there's a farmer and his wife, and his wife had cheated. She had an affair. Uh Uh-oh. Yes. And she was also, um, she was pregnant and, like, gave birth at the house, pretty much. Um, and sadly, she died during childbirth. Rest in peace. So her husband, he was actually, like, so mad that she was not faithful to him. And that, and she, he was also, like, really upset and sad that she died, you know, Mm -hmm. giving birth to this baby. Um, and to put icing on top of that cake he also believed that it was not his baby because like just, she's like i was gonna ask yeah so she he was like she was unfaithful to me like he's probably not even my baby and she just died no. you know yeah so she he like hated this baby and i don't know if it was like immediate but <laughs> sometime after the baby was born he took this baby um out onto Cooper Road where he lived and he walked over to the bridge mm-hmm. and he threw the baby into the river below the bridge. Oh, he did not eat that baby. No. Yeah, he threw him, threw him into the river. So sad. Um, so the baby drowned in the water under the bridge on Cooper Road. And the bridge is now nicknamed Crybaby Bridge. Oh, Crybaby Bridge. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's and as so we sad. know, yeah, it is very sad. But as we know, because um, if you've listened to episode 56, um, Taylor actually covered a bunch of Crybaby Bridges. Mm-hmm. I really did. 
Yeah, so this is kind of a common thing. I don't know, is that how they were all named that? Yeah. Our babies being it's thrown also, in? Yeah, yeah, and there's literally, like, almost a crybaby bridge, at least one in, like, almost every state. Why is that such a common thing? I They're don't know. like, let's I just guess, throw these babies in. I guess it's just an easy way to get rid of a baby. I don't know. I guess. I don't know. Don't none of y'all throw no babies over bridges. Yeah, we're not. We're advising against that. Yeah, we've got to be clear. <laughs> um, so they say that now, since you know the baby died in in the water under the bridge, they say that at one a.m. you can hear this baby crying. Hmm. That's sad and also very creepy. Yeah. Um, and there's also another thing. This is similar to Pain Road. Um, they say that at, um, if you stop your car on the bridge and turn it off, it won't start back up again. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't like that. Yeah. Um, that's like a common thing too. Mm-hmm, it definitely these spooky is. spooky roads. It really mm-hmm. is. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. They People just want to freak each other out, you know. Yeah, literally. Um, so, also, people say that if you park your car and turn it off, the bridge, um, or on the bridge, the car will be pushed across the bridge oh. away from the water. Mm, interesting. That baby is super strength. I was going to say, no, literally, they say that it's the ghost of the dead baby pushing the car. <laughs> Stop. And I was going to, and I have in here strong baby. <laughs> strong like, baby. It's like Jack imagine. Jack. Yes. But different completely. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know how they think a baby is going to push it across, but that's what they say. I like, mean, yeah. I don't, we don't know anything about the ghost baby powers though. That's true. Yeah. So he's pushing them to safety though. So that's good. Yeah, exactly. You know? He's using like, yeah, the power of good with him, you know? Mm-hmm. But also I don't get, okay. These are two conflicting ideas though they are one is that your car is gonna stop and like not turn back on Mm -hmm. and the other one is the baby's gonna save you from the water by pushing you right and it's like are you trying to save them or stop them you know like i don't know is there something else in there right or like what if it's like yeah what if it's something else pretending and they just like think it's the baby the dad the farmer Mm. right like where did he die I don't know. Mm, creepy. Maybe he's he's involved. I don't know. Um, but also, I wanted to mention this bridge is actually really small. <laughs> really, so I was picturing really... it like huge. Yeah, no, it's it's basically just like a slab of concrete over a stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. So, because I I watched a video of somebody um like going to this bridge, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's like the tiniest bridge. Hmm. So not yeah i don't know and also like it doesn't seem like there's enough water underneath of it for a baby to like even i guess a baby would drown but yeah that's what i was gonna ask like if it was such a stream but also babies drown real easy yeah and also we don't know how long ago it was like the it could have been like a flowing river back then yeah or i mean it seems like this could just be like a story a legend because yeah yeah, because there's not really any time frame there's not really any names to it yeah that's true so and it doesn't seem like there's enough water for this baby i don't know but that's that's the legend there that there's a baby that cries at this bridge so cry baby bridge cry baby bridge okay so the real um the real spooky part of this is the other road that i want to talk about um, Whippoorwill Valley Road. So, this one, I'm going to connect it back to Cooper Road for a second. They say that when you travel along Whippoorwill, um, at night, um, and turn off your car, you will hear a baby crying in the distance. Hmm. And your car won't turn back on. So, supposedly, this is the baby from the bridge, and, like, even though you're not on that road, you can hear it in the distance. And your car still, um, like, won't turn back on. So, mm-hmm. so that's spooky. Very. Um, so, this road, like I said, it was, like, a it's a dirt road. And there's, like, woods on either side, you know? Mm-hmm. 
that sort of vibe. And people will go out into the woods and, like, do rituals and, like, have gatherings. But people say that, oh, it's probably just, like, you know, teenagers going out to have fun. Yeah, probably. That sort of thing. Not, like, real... Yeah, um, like, satanic worship going on in the woods. Yeah, not, not that kind of stuff. But it's, like, teenagers, like, drawing, like, uh symbols on trees and stuff mm-hmm. to freak to freak people out yeah so there's that but also um there are some darker stories though oh so take it back to around the 1800s there were um seven farmers who accused 15 women of being witches and the witches were burned at the stake and buried um six feet under Mm, no not the witches Um, i know um so these witches before they died uh before they were killed they put hexes on the farmers Mm. and the farmers all died in a strange with a strange disease um 10 months later oh okay hex pop off i know right so these farmers they were buried 10 feet away from the witches so right next to uh, him, basically. How would they do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I really, yeah, like. Also, like, did they all die on the same day? Maybe. Right. I guess that would make it spookier since it's the hex. So. True. Um, okay, so yeah, they were buried ten feet away, and years later, a road was built on that very spot. Oh, I hate when they build roads over literal bodies. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, when you're going to hate this even more, when you drive down Whipperwill, um, you will feel 15 bumps under your wheels on the way back. And on the way back, you'll feel seven bumps. So stop. you'll feel bumps of the witches and the farmers. Uh, is that real? Well, this is all just legend. Oh, that is so <laughs> horrible. I don't even want to think about that, though. Like, But uh, you could... I mean, you would probably feel a few bumps just since it's a dirt road. Yeah. Mm. So that's what people say. Yeah. They're like, oh, wow. those are the witches. That's so bad. That's so bad. Mm-hmm. Not every time I drive over a bump, but that's all I'm going to think about. A witch being buried yeah. under there? Yeah, like there might be. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Um, so i i did a little digging and there are actually no real details to back up this story oh interesting yeah it's sort of just a legend that came about it seems like because there are no like newspapers um people writing about it um like any sort of record of witch trial um in this area like at all and Mm -hmm. It also wasn't the right time period for witch trials. Yeah, like that's true. it would have been before this, um, which I guess doesn't matter to the story yeah. as much because it's like oh, it could have they could have just had the time wrong. But mm-hmm. um, there was only ever one witch trial in New Jersey, actually. Oh, and it was only is like one one woman, Abigail Sharp. Oh wow, so. Abigail Sharp of Woodridge, um, and this in Woodri- Woodridge is not even near this area that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was tried for being a witch, but she was not put to death. Oh. So. Well, good. Yeah, so good. Um, but, but yeah, so that, that just proves that this story is sort of just legend. But yeah, yeah definitely. It's a fun story, though. Very fun very spooky yeah um i know i there's like i know there was there was like witch trials in this area but i guess they never got to new jersey um i guess they were all sort of like north of there right Mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say i actually don't really know where they happened too much they were in like new england okay that's what i thought yeah and new jersey's a little bit south south of new england yeah so yeah, didn't didn't really get down there. Um, I guess I don't know about Jersey too much, but I know like the Pennsylvania, like 
Philadelphia area, which is close by, um, they had all the Quakers, which they, they didn't really do witch trials, I don't think. Oh, okay. So they were, um, I know that their whole thing was, like, friendship. I don't know. I don't know much about it, so I guess you know, I don't really get it. my only experience, not even my experience, with a, a Quaker person would was one of my best friends like rode on a plane beside a Quaker and he was like telling her everything about it and it is it does have a lot to do with friendship but I was really not understanding what she was saying (laughs) I think there was something got lost in the translation there yeah I didn't realize people people were still Quakers yeah they are they are like isn't that I guess I kind of did because there were um actually there are Quaker schools now that I think of it oh really yeah. Like a, like so. a Christian school, but a Quaker school? Yeah, I think so. Oh, interesting. Hmm. And it, it is about, like, friend, friends, or I don't know. <laughs> hmm. We'll have to look more into that. Yeah, I don't want to spread min- misinformation by just, like, blab it on. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't know much about him. <laughs> Me neither. The, the Quaker Oats guy. <laughs> yeah, I do I know, know him. <laughs> do know him. Um, okay, well, anyways. Um... I want to get into something creepier having to do with this road. Oh, there's a lot going on here. It gets, it, there is honestly a lot going on here. So this one kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, okay, let's just, let's just get into it. Um, they say that when you drive down Whippoorwill, um, there is a truck that will appear out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And it will try to corner you. Mm-mm. And the people in the truck are dressed in KKK uniforms. Okay. Abs- this is no. Yeah. That's horrifying. Yeah. So the KKK has always scared me for obvious reasons. Yeah. And I just do not. Yeah. Well, obviously, we don't like them. Yeah. Um. But let me let me tell you some facts about the kkk in this area okay so they were active in this area in the 20s okay which is like the 1920s yes at this point we have to determine it like if we're talking about now (laughs) i mean true but i don't i don't know when they were formed probably around then i don't know yeah i have no idea yeah Hmm. well anyways um yeah in the 1920s they were like active in that area And they were actually, like, something I read said that they were sort of invited by Protestants in the area um, to come to the Jersey Shore to get rid of the the rum runners. Wow. So, if you know what that is, um, or if you don't know what that is, is basically people who illegally sold, like, rum and liquor because it the during the 1920s it was prohibition in america and alcohol was illegal so there was these people like especially in port cities and like this area was a port um so they would um use port cities to get the alcohol in and everything so anyways they um wanted the kkk there to sort of put an end to that and they also got the mafia (laughs) there Mm -hmm. too Mm -hmm. so they were all just like there trying to get rid of this i don't know and probably some other stuff too because other motives behind that for sure yeah because you know obviously the kkk is like talking about the kkk here who you hear them and you think of obviously racism yeah so like they were probably doing other stuff too there, but For sure. I didn't really look it up too much. I just saw that that's, they were like welcome in the area almost. Mm-hmm. Um, Disgusting. Yeah. So are we saying that this is a truck full of ghost KKK members or are we saying it's real KKK members in a truck? Um, I don't know. Oh, I it mean, either. either one, I'm not trying to be near whatsoever. Yeah. It um, could be either. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. So, there is documented evidence of them in Middletown, New Jersey, which is where this road is. Mm-hmm. And 
um, a few other cities in New Jersey as well. Um, nothing really ties them to Whippoorwill Road specifically though. And people say that they held meetings in the woods by the road, mm -hmm. but they may not have even needed to hold meetings in private because they They're had welcome. like, yeah, they were sort of <laughs> welcome there by, I mean, at least probably the white people. Of course, um, of course. And they had public rallies that people attended. Oh my God, that is insane. I mean, yeah. it's not insane, but like, you know, for the time period, but like. Yeah. That's just crazy. And th for the truck, the whole truck thing, there's not really any evidence of there being a truck there mm -hmm. either. Yeah. But that's just part of the whole legend. Yeah. So. Wow. That road seems like one I'm not trying to go down. I know. Like, I'm not yeah. trying to meet any of that. I know. Situation. Like, even if it... Not even see, the crying baby. Have honestly. you ever seen that movie, um, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah, I have. Yeah, see that room. That's what I was thinking of when I was um, mm -hmm. reading the part about the KKK. Yeah, because they meet in the woods there. Yeah, they do. And I was also gonna say, I know for a fact that there is. I don't know if they're like specifically in Wilmington, but there is like a KKK group somewhere around the area, and I've heard allegedly that they meet at Carolina Beach State Park sometimes. I heard that too. Um. So, some people I yeah. know that. I, actually have seen them out there so it definitely still exists today um that it's so scary that so they do horrifying. still exist that's horrifying and that they're they're so bold enough to meet in a public place like that is so scary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if i ever saw one i don't know what i would do Someone i would be i would be so public? scared but i would want to fight <laughs> but i wouldn't <laughs> because i'd probably be so scared oh my god yeah it's just like terrifying. i don't know they're crazy if you're in the kkk yeah. i'm sorry you're crazy yes sorry and i'm definitely um, if they're a ghost kkk truck that's hor. that's no it, like but especially in today's day like i feel like obviously like it was still horrible to do it in the 1920s like and you know previously but of course but it was more accepted then yes generally so it's like or like you could be convinced into it easier but it's like today it's like People should be more informed. Right. I don't know. It's just like crazy to me be. that people would still. I don't know. No, it's, it is crazy. It weird. really is crazy. Okay. Well, um, I'm not done there. Oh my so goodness. There's still there's still some stuff going on on this road. Sort wow. of. So I do want to give a little warning because we don't always we don't usually talk about like murders or deaths on this podcast but I am going to talk a little bit about something so if you're not really like into the true crime part then maybe like skip this part um so yeah because we do we do talk about it sometimes but yeah but thanks so I I had to mention it um there is so this is like the true story part of it mm -hmm. that makes this road eerie and creepy mm -hmm. so yeah, I'll jump right into it. This is, um, I'm going to talk about the murder of Nancy Clark, um, from Fairhaven, New Jersey. And Fairhaven is, like, right by Middletown. Okay. Um, so, on March 6th of 1982, Nancy, age 22, um, she was found with a stab wound to the chest on Whippoorwill Road. And she was stabbed with a military-type knife. Oh, my God. She was found on Whippoorwill Road on a paved area towards Chapel Hill, New Jersey. And she was last seen at a bar in Seabright, which is another neighboring town, um, the night before. So, I guess she, like, had gone out for drinks and stuff. And then, you know, the next day... Wow. So, people say, like, it took a little while to figure out what had happened, but people say that they saw her getting into a car with three men. Um, she was hitchhiking with them. Oh, no. Yeah. So, I guess she needed a ride home and, yeah, decided to hitchhike with these three men. And, like, hitchhiking to me is also another crazy thing. That's insane. It's like, 
I don't know. Even though... Like, I understand I some know. people really don't have a choice, but that is so dangerous. But it, the thing is, like, I've learned a little bit more, like, as I listen to different podcasts and, like, hear stories of people's deaths and stuff, like, hitchhiking used to be more, way more common and accepted and, like, people trusted each other yeah, way I mean, more. Like, the whole world trusted each other. Like, people didn't lock their doors. Like, yeah. today, everything's on camera, everything's recorded, everything's locked at all times. Like, people cannot be trusted. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even think people could have been trusted back then, but people were just dumber, you know? That, see, that's what I that's what I kind of think. But, um, I guess, I mean, most of the time, it probably would have worked out, hitchhiking. Yeah. No, for and, sure. Like, nine like, times out of ten, you're probably fine. Yeah, and, like, in today's age, like, maybe it would still probably work out for you most of the time, but, like... You never really know. know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Also, like, I... Okay. Also, I saw somebody trying to hitchhike recently. Oh, I see people trying to hitchhike all the time. See. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not picking you up. Yeah, because also, like, you as a driver have to make sure you trust the person. Exactly. It's like... Exactly. It's just crazy. But, yes, um, back to this story. So, she, she decided to hitchhike to get home. Um, but she never made it home, sadly. Oh, that's so sad. Nancy. Yeah. Um, so two of the men in this car, they were arrested, and one of them was charged with her murder. Um, he was sentenced to life in prison. Good. Thomas W. Bailiff. He confessed to stabbing her and leaving her on Whippoorwill Road. Wow. Um, Whippoorwill Valley Road. Keep forgetting to add that in there. Um... And the other man who was, um, like, arrested, he was indicted for complicity to the murder. Mm -hmm. So, basically, just, like, for being involved. Yeah. And Bailiff, the one who was charged, he um, was actually an AWOL Marine at the time. Oh, no way. Yeah. So, that's already a crime. (laughs) Yeah, a big one. So... Yeah, anyways. Um, and he was actually released on parole in 2017. Mm-mm. Are you for real? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. I mean, this was in the 80s, so I guess... Yeah, let's hope that he is reformed and a changed person now. Yeah. Let's hope. Um, yeah, I haven't really... I didn't really check up on him to see if he did anything. Yeah, maybe else. we should have. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah. Sad story on Whippoorwill Valley Road. Very. Um, and there also have been two other deaths on the road, but they were accidental and not ruled as suspicious. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really want to like. Yeah. You know, I didn't think I needed to add those because. Yeah, for sure. They probably don't really add to the. The eeriness of this road, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that is Whippoorwill Valley Road and Cooper Road. That's so crazy. I really don't know if I would drive down that road by choice. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Like, because we did go to Payne Road. That's a little different than this. Like, there's a lot more going on, I feel like, here. Yeah. Like, you got danger coming in every direction. Babies, evil men, KKK. I know, I know. I was surprised by, like, the amount of stories for this one road. Because usually when we find, like, a haunted road or something, yeah, there's just like one. Small. Yeah, there's, like, one main story. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's mm-hmm. crazy. That's, wow. That was a wild ride you took us on, Savannah. Yes. A ride wow. down this road. <laughs> oh, right. Ride down both roads. Um. Wow. I have a pretty crazy tale for you, too. Um, Ooh, okay. So, I have a mystery today, okay? We we know I love those. I love hate. Um, mm-hmm. So, I have for you the mystery of the Gurdon Ghost Light. Dun, dun, dun! Ooh, okay. That, you know, Ghost Light stuff? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I've... I've have we done something about those before? Oh, we have light? definitely done. I didn't look it up. But I know we did, like, the ghost lighthouse, but that's still, oh, yeah. that counts as a ghost light, because there See, wasn't okay. always a lighthouse there. But what I was going to say is, like, a ghost light kind of reminds me of, like, the Great Gatsby. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Because isn't there, like, a it's a green light mm-hmm. there, right? Yeah. And I know we've also talked about, like, the ghost lights that people leave in, like, theaters. 
because yeah. of that legend. And I covered some lights, the Phoenix lights. Recently. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we've probably covered more lights because there's just all types of weird lights going on. Yeah, guys. that's true. Um, but for this little ghost light. Okay, so today, you know, our story takes us to the town of Gurdon, Arkansas, which if I'm not going to lie, that's a very ugly name. Gurdon. <laughs> It is G-U-R-D-O-N. Disgusting. Um, but anyway, not to just literally crap on that city. Um, <laughs> so it's so it's actually sometimes called like just the Garden Light, but I'm calling it the Garden Ghost Light because that's way more fun, obviously. But mm-hmm. it is a light phenomenon that is still going on today. Like you can still see it today. So Oh, like constantly or? Not constantly. It, okay, but, it, like, comes and goes. Yeah, it comes and goes. But people still see it, like, as of very recently. So keep that in mind. Um, which, I mean, I think it's crazy, though, because, like, normally when we're talking about legends, it's something that happened a long time ago, but, like, doesn't still happen today, you know? Mm-hmm. So pretty lit that it still happens today. What? Or maybe not. So, you know. But as, as I said, this is a mystery. So some people, you know, don't even believe that this actually exists. So um, this story became like popularized when the famous tv show unsolved mysteries did an episode on it back in 1994 so that episode is older than the both of us um that's crazy (laughs) yeah but anyways let's jump right on into the story so the local legend um tells a story to explain the light but unsolved mysteries tells like a little bit of a different story so i'll cover both of those but a common theme to, in both of the legends is that the ghostly, like, apparition, light, whatever you want to call it, is a light coming from an, uh, the ghost of a real, a railway worker. So, keep that in mind. So, okay. this location where people see the light is still in use by railways. <clears throat> so, it is, like, on a railroad. Like, kind of, like, close to a station, but not at the station. But... The way that this light moves, it reminds you, like, almost, like, of a railway worker, like, carrying a lantern, like, while walking, like, beside the track. So, one of the legends um, is more historically accurate than the other, okay? So, in 1931, a man named William McLean, um, he was this, like, Missouri railroad foreman worker guy, and he was kind of, like, the boss at the time. Um, so this man, William, he actually fired this other guy, um, Lewis McBride. So he said, peace out, Lewis, leave. And Lewis got a little bit angry, you know, because he was fired. He needed a job. The man loved money because who doesn't? Um, so he took out his rage and actually killed William McLean. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. So, the events leading up to the murder are a little sketchy. Some sources say, you know, like, the argument, there was, like, an argument between the two. And because of that, Lewis sabotaged a section of the train track and caused a derailment. Um, And others say Hmm. Lewis was um, asking for, like, more hours and more pay and William wouldn't give him any of that. But there are newspaper articles that were published in 1932 that state William accused Lewis of being the reason that there was a train accident a few days prior. So we're kind of going with the fact that maybe he sabotaged the tracks. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, you know, that version of the story is believed to be like the real one. I mean, we have proof it was in the newspapers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It definitely seems like the more (laughs) definitely accurate version. Definitely. So, but regardless of why, like, who cares about the reason of why he was murdered, whether it be the derailment, the firing, who, who cares? William, M- William McLean was found beaten to death with a railroad spike. Oh, my God. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's not good. Oh my God. And yeah. Lewis, you know, he didn't get away with it. Everybody was like, OK, well, obviously we know who did that. Um And he was sentenced to death by electrocution and was executed on July 8th, 1932. Um, Yeah, for the murder. And the Garden Light was first documented very shortly after um, William was executed in the 1930s. So, or not William, Lewis. yeah. Yeah. So it's theorized that the light is actually 
the victim, William McLean, haunting the tracks, carrying the same lantern that he would have carried out there to work on the broken train track. <gasps> Oh, oh my God! Yeah. The so that like, is so creepy. like, the idea is that he had went out there to fix the train track that Lewis broke, and then while mm-hmm. he was out there, Lewis came and killed him. So he's like stuck in a loop of yeah. like being at work. Yeah, and that's uh, that's just like my absolute worst nightmare. Yeah, like, honestly. Not only being killed at work, but then killed because of work, and then stuck at work for who knows Eterni- how long. Eternity. Like we have to go help this man. You know what I'm saying? Like he's still there. Mm-hmm. allegedly mm-hmm. um so yeah so the theory that's the theory you know that unsolved mystery is covered and you know very historically factually driven but the theory that the locals toss around is not so much historically based but it's very interesting okay so it says that a railroad worker was working outside of the town one night but like kind of close to town just a little bit outside And he accidentally fell into the path of a train and his head was severed from his body. Um, But they never found his head. Um, So the local people say that the light, the ghost light that everybody sees is actually the light from this worker's lantern as he walks the tracks searching for his missing head. (gasps) Oh my God. It's like headless horseman vibes. Literally, literally. Without the horse. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. And especially during this time, like, it was fairly common back then for railway workers to be injured or killed on the job. So, like, it's not to say the story isn't true, but, you know, it's just not as factually based. So Yeah. Yeah, not, n- there's, like, pr- not as much proof. You know? Yeah, no. There was no, like, history of, like, decapitation anywhere, like, that could be found. So. Yeah. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe somebody covered it up. We really don't know. And that is what the local people say. So, who knows? Um, Okay, so moving on to this light that people claim to see. It cannot be seen from the highway. Okay, that's very important. Let's definitely remember that. You actually have to go to, like, walk to this area to see it. It's a two and a half mile hike to where you can see this light. And I'm not telling you how to get there, but apparently you will pass two trestles. Now, I think it's pronounced trestles, maybe trestles. Okay. Regardless, I didn't know what a trestle or a trestle was. Yeah, I don't was. know what that is <laughs> um, either. So I looked it up, and it's, you do know what it is. I just, we just didn't know the name of it. It's like oh. the bridge that's used for trains. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Like, okay. not, an, uh, not a bridge that's like a car and a train bridge, like just a train bridge. Oh, well, why is it called a trestle? I mean, right. I I, yeah, me neither. And I was like, wow, you know, huh. learn something new. So... If you want to go here, you apparently have to pass over two of the trestles before you get there. So that's how you like you know for a fact that you're in the right place. Um, so when when I say a trestle, I imagine like a humongous like mountain. You know what I'm saying? Like a bridge in between two ginormous mountains. These are like smaller trestles. Trestles. They're like not that scary because you know like it is scary to cross one of those because like if a train comes. You're like, you can't just jump off, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but these, <laughs> yeah. Are, these are small, so not as scary. Not as dangerous, at least. Um, so anyway, the spot where you're supposed to be able to see the light in is marked by, like, a slight incline in the tracks and then a long hill. So once you see, like, this little incline and then a very long hill, you know you've made it to the right place. Um, okay. <clears throat> the light is described as, like, an eerie white-blue light that sometimes can appear, like, orange in the middle. And it, like, sways back and forth and moves, like, around the horizon sign. I mean, a horizon line. And it is frequently seen on the darkest nights, and it's best seen when it's cloudy and overcast. So, got to make sure when we go here, it's dark, cloudy, and overcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, and where did you say it was again? It's in Arkansas. Okay, well, I don't know anything about weather in Arkansas. But <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. No, I, I think it's, like, say. in the middle of the United States, so. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know really even what that means, but, you know. Well, I'm sure we could find a, <laughs> a good um, cloudy day. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, Unsolved Mysteries did not find out what the light actually was either. Um, and nor have any scientists that have studied this area because... 
many schools have sent scientists out to like see about this light. But there are a few theories. So let's get into them. The most leading theory is that this, like the light, is actually just highway lights reflecting through the trees. But historians and scientists both disagree. Um, They say that the light has been historically written about and spoken about far before the highway was even built. Um, So that kind of immediately throws it off because, I mean, if it was just spoken, maybe that would be different, but it is it's written about far before the highway was there. Hmm. So that kind of proves that, you know, can't be the highway when there's not a highway. Yeah. That really like gets me. I'm like, I don't exactly. And, um, researchers from Henderson state university looked, did this whole research project on these lights to see if they could determine what it was. And they looked very much like heavy into the highway lights theory. And they also determined that it cannot be the lights from the highway. So, and that, I didn't go into, like, the study to see what it was, but it was not just because the historians, like, it was some kind of scientific, like, how far the light could go mm-hmm, type stuff. Mm-hmm. So, very interesting. So, we kind of know it's not just car lights being reflected. So, what else could it be? Um, the second biggest theory, okay, you're just going to have to stay with me on this one, okay? <laughs> it's going to get a little crazy. So, okay. this theory suggests that qu- quartz crystals, okay, are underneath the city of Gurdon, Arkansas. Like, that's okay. just kind of, like, what is under there. And because of this quartz that's under there, this causes them to uh, emit electricity and produce the light. So, apparently, this, like, scientific phenomenon where this quartz will cause electricity and then produce light is called the piezo piezoelectric effect. So it's like a known what? thing that happens in science because of this crystal. Oh my god. Um and so basically this theory in a very dumbed down version to explain it to you guys states that the New Madrid fault runs through the area and that fault puts intense pressure on these quartz crystals. And, like, when the fault puts the pressure on the crystals, it squeezes them together. And then when it's when they squeeze together, it forms a spark. And that's what causes the light. That is so crazy. I I thought you were going to say that it reflects off of the crystals. And that makes sense. But Right. No, because they're underground. No. Oh, my God. So what's crazy about this is that you may actually know this effect. And while I was researching researching it and first learning about it, I said, what the heck? That is crazy. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. like that's like, crazy. What? But you probably maybe all know this effect in a different way. So the piezoelectric effect also happens when you eat Winto Green lightsabers. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, my God. So yes. fun fact, if you don't know, um... Those specific winto green lifesavers, like the little white ones, if you eat it in a dark room and chew it really hard, the pressure from you chewing it causes a little spark that you can literally see in your mouth because of this pressure. Mm-hmm. So they're like, this is exactly what's happening here, and that's causing the light. And I'm like, that is so crazy because that honestly sounds right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like nobody else can determine what else it could be. So like maybe that's it. So is it just like a steady light or does it flash on and off? It doesn't flash on and off, but it doesn't last very long and it sways back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So, um, let's see here. So, yeah, that theory, kind of crazy, but I kind of believe it. But moving on to another theory, it's way smaller than the other two and not really believed by many, but I felt like mentioning, um... So, some people think that the light is actually caused by swamp gas. <laughs> um, what? Yeah. So, swamp basically, gas. <laughs> swamp gas. So, that swamp gas is, like, a real thing. Um, and, apparently, this area is very swampy. So, you know, swamp life. But if you don't know what swamp gas is, basically, like, swamp, <laughs> the word swamp sounds so wrong now because I've said it so much. But <laughs> um, because swamps, like, have so much water there 
it basically like swamp areas tend to have more like methane gas and sulfur gas and so also people kind of dump bodies in swamp areas because those gases like decom decompose the bodies faster another fun fact anyway some people believe that this methane gas and sulfur gas the swamp gas is causing this light to appear um hmm. but and like for no other reason other than it's just gas yeah I'm, like would that <laughs> like a dirty bubble light appear like i don't know but <laughs> If that was the case, I think that we would have more, like, crazy light phenomenons going on in swampy areas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Wilmington yeah. is pretty swampy in places, and I've never seen any weird lights. Yeah. So, hmm. I don't know. Don't really believe the swamp gas theory, personally, but, you know. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really anything to back it up there. No, not really so. at all. Not at all. But anyways, so, Garden, Arkansas is located about 75 miles south of Little Rock, Arkansas and as I said it's a two and a half mile hike so it does apparently take a couple hours to get there but apparently if you go into Garden, Arkansas you can literally go up to any local and they can tell you the exact directions to get there which I think that's pretty cool um and the locals actually call it the ghost light bluffs they don't call it the Garden ghost light so you know if you gotta mm -hmm. ask somebody make sure you call it the ghost light bluffs right um, okay. so let's get to the very, very interesting part, which to me, I believe makes this no longer a mystery, but you know, I guess we'll have to see. Um, so there is a similar light phenomenon going on in the town of Crossit, Arkansas. Okay. And what's very interesting is Crossit, Arkansas has a lot of courts underneath it too. So... Um, okay. some people, let me see. Okay. So before I move on to the next thing, some people are like, you know, if it's happening here and it's happening also in this other city, that's heavy concentrated with courts, maybe the courts is the answer. And I really do think that's kind of what it is. But anyway, um, so I read some things about people who actually saw the light for themselves at least so they say, and they describe it as very crisp. Like, they kind of thought it was going to be, like, not blurry, but, like, a little bit blurry, if that makes sense. But they were like, no, it was very crisp, very clear, and, like, way easier to see than they thought it was going to be. Um, and they did say that they tried to get close to, to it to, like, see what it was. And that's what I really wanted to know when I was looking this up. I was like, did people actually try to see what it is? Because that seems like the easiest answer, right? Right. Like, can anybody get close to it? So, no. <laughs> they said that they okay. tried for, like, two hours to try to get close to it, and they just kept moving with it, but it would just move. And basically, like, once they got to, like, where it was, it had already moved. So, it was just gone. Well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Very disappointing. So, yeah, apparently this ghost light is most popular um, at Halloween time. That's where everybody goes during the Halloween season. But yeah, I want to know, what do you think is behind these lights? Well, I guess I I do kind of believe the whole quartz, um, you know, theory mm -hmm. with but, the electricity. But what about stuff. the ghost? But the, I do also man. want it to be the ghost of the man. Yeah, I mean, I kind of hope it's the quartz just out of, like, the sake of the man, so he's not trapped there for the rest of his life True. Yeah, after yeah. being brutally murdered. But, like... yeah. It could be. I really don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I really just don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could be a mixture of both. Could be, yeah. But yeah, mm. that is the mystery of the garden ghost light. Da -da -da. Mm. Well, that is crazy because I've never heard anything like that before. Me neither. <laughs> Literally me neither. Mm. I was like, wow, how have I not heard about this? Yeah. People in Arkansas are like, come on, what's going on there? Yeah, I, I love it. Me too. Honestly, yeah. I'm trying to go there, and I'm trying to see it. I would love to I know. see it. I know. We say that so many times, but, like, I, I do want to go see this. Like, our list is long, but, like, we're going. You know what I'm saying? I like, mean, eventually yeah, exactly. we're going to get there. Exactly. I don't really know what else there is to do in Garden, Arkansas, but we're going to find out. Yeah, we'll find something. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, go look at our Instagram to see some pictures. Um, there's not really pictures of the ghost light, but, like, we'll find something, you know? 
Yeah, yeah. And this road, I mean, it's just a dirt road. It's just a road, we'll, but we'll you know, <laughs> there'll be pictures regardless. And also go rate and review us on Spotify and Apple Podcast, and go follow us on YouTube and watch us on YouTube. And yeah, I guess I don't really have anything else. What about you, Savannah? I think that's it for today. Okay, well, I guess we will see you guys next week. All right, cue the music.